What is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life, coming at you on YouTube and today I've got some football focus. The Pittsburgh Steelers played the Buffalo Bills last night in week two of the 2023 NFL preseason. I'm coming to you guys the morning after. It is a day late. I apologize. My birthday was this weekend. My party was this weekend. I just got cast in a show, so I'm learning lines while I'm also having my birthday party. Uh, which was a very late night. Uh, so I'm coming to you guys a little bit late, but I watched the game last night live, wrote down some thoughts, put some more thoughts down this morning, and I'm bringing you guys my day after Pittsburgh Steelers at Buffalo Bills thoughts. Pittsburgh wins the game 27-15, and the game was not even as close as the score indicates. Buffalo got a bunch of uh, like fourth string garbage time, uh, got uh, two touchdowns or whatever. Yeah, two touchdowns and a two-point conversion. Pittsburgh was skunking him for most of the game. This was a pretty dominant game that Pittsburgh got out to a quick 14-0 lead and kept the entire time. As we know, the score doesn't matter in preseason, but Pittsburgh gets another win and looks really good doing it. The first thing you look for is the starting team. How are they going to play against the Bills' starting team? The Bills have a really good defense, good coverage team, physical linebackers. The Bills have a very good defense and a good team overall, and they played their starters for a couple drives last night against our starters, and our guys looked really, really good. Once again, the team just came out firing. First drive, um, Kenny Pickett comes out looking in midseason form from last year. Like, like if you look at toward the end of our year last year, uh, in the last nine games, how good the offense started to gel and look together, that's how Pickett's been looking this preseason. He looks sharp. He comes out and hits George Pickens on a nice route in the first drive, hits Allen Robinson downfield on the first drive, comes out looking really smooth, and then Jalen Warren runs a 62-yard uh, touchdown. Looks amazing. Gets to the outside. Good blocks by, um, I'm trying to, I think it was the left side of the line. Uh, two good blocks on the edge, and then Deontay seals on the outside for a block. Warren springs and outruns the safeties of the Bills for a 62-yard touchdown. Uh, he's been looking really, really good this preseason. He's he's been uh, he has had limited action, but one carry, 62 yards, and a touchdown here. And I'll get into the running game in a second as well as we go. But then our next drive, Calvin Austin uh, gets his first punt return opportunity in the NFL and runs 54 yards. Almost goes the entire way. Um, it, uh, goes to juke the kicker, gets slowed up a little bit, and then gets tackled by the last guy on on the uh, the defense going toward the end zone. So 54-yard return on, on Calvin Austin's first uh, return. He's the return guy, obviously. He's going to be the punt and kick return guy. Nothing against Gunner, but Calvin Austin looks so explosive. He's so quick. He's got such good moves with the ball. He just Once he gets those jets turned on, you see a speed that... Very few guys in the entire NFL actually have. Calvin Austin did a ton last night with a very limited time. I, I love what he did on that return. Uh, very next play, Pickett comes back out, throws a 25-yard strike in the middle of the field to Pat Fryermuth, who makes a nice catch in the end zone. So the offense goes two for two. Long rushing touchdown, long, punt, long kick return, 25-yard uh, touchdown pass. So you can't feel anything but perfect. Uh, this starting offense looks as good right now for preseason. If, if, if you want to get your reps in for preseason and you want to get yourself regular season ready, there's no better way than Pittsburgh starting offense has done these first two games. And they're probably not going to play in game three. We've got a short turnaround time. Third game on Thursday. It's the last preseason game. Pittsburgh starters aren't going to play. But you cannot get any, you cannot look any better as a unit than Pittsburgh's team has done this preseason so far. If we look in terms of the passing uh, in this game, all three quarterbacks look pretty good. Trubisky was like 10 of 13. He looked a little better than he did last week. He was kind of limited last week. Looked pretty good this week. Not too bad. Hit Gunner on some nice stuff. Uh, Mason Rudolph, I think, was like 4 of 5. He came in uh, through a few passes. Nothing special. Did have one that was almost picked. One really bad throw, but the other ones were all pretty solid. So none of the quarterbacks looked bad. Tanner Morgan did come out in the fourth quarter. Didn't throw any passes. Uh, one scramble, and he got lost for a big sack. So he's he's going to be off this team. Uh, Pickett's the starter. Trubisky, I think, is the backup, and Mason is the third. Those are kind of clear. Uh, all three of those quarterbacks played fine tonight. Running back-wise, we only had the one nice run. If you take away Jalen Warren's 62-yard run, uh, we averaged like under a yard a carry. It was pretty rough last night. Um, to be fair, though, I'm going to put most of that on the offensive line. I think the line played pretty rough. Um, Najee didn't do anything. Uh, let's, let's discuss Najee real quick. So number one, I want to pump the brakes on the Najee haters real quick. I've been hearing a lot of like anti-Najee talk, a lot of like running back battle with Jalen Warren talk. Najee Harris is still only in his third season, has played two years and had 2,000 yard seasons. So, I mean, he's two for two. As a, a young player running behind a makeshift line that is not played very well in, in the first three seasons, uh, even last year was a little better, but still they haven't played great. 
And Najee, again, has played two years and got 2,000-yard seasons. So I know that's not as special as it used to be, but Najee's played pretty well. So I'm, I'm going to pump the brakes on the whole hate on Najee thing. By the same token, though, I am starting to become a little bit concerned myself. Uh, just having not seen Najee break anything, I mean, granted, the running game minus the one run tonight was was, was bad. I think the offensive line played pretty poorly, uh, especially in the second group tonight. Um, but Warren, Warren and McFarlane have looked a lot more explosive with the starters than Najee has. Um, McFarlane played with the starters a lot in the first game and looked pretty good doing it. Warren had the one one carry that was a big touchdown run. So the, the starting line overall has looked decent. The backups have not. But the starting line looked pretty good, and Najee is not looking like he has any burst. He's not finishing strong. He's not looking like he has any real burst or speed or anything. So uh, while I'm not going to go full sale hate, I'm not going to say there's a a controversy. Najee's still the starter. Even 50-50 I'd be fine with. I I do love Jalen Warren. He looks great. But I'm not going to hate on Najee entirely, but I do want to see him make one or two nice runs. I do want to see like a, you know, an eight yard burst or or a quick 12 yard first down. I want to see Najee do something because he does get a negative uh, point in this game for me. Otherwise, when the backup line came in, none of the other running backs did much. Uh, Bell didn't do much. Uh, Xavier, uh, I forget his last name. He came over from, uh, he just got cut this week by another team. He didn't do anything special. Uh, so it was just kind of guy, uh, Valade, Xavier Valade didn't do much today. Uh, McFarland didn't look very good today either. I'm putting most of that on the line. By the time the running backs were touching the ball, they were getting tackled. So, uh, nothing else to speak of there. Receiving wise, um, I, I love, love what I'm seeing. The third touchdown of the day was, uh, Trub- was it Trubisky to Connor Hayward? Connor Hayward to me it looks so good. I'm I'm really in, I'm loving this guy's preseason tape. He is just showing me so much as a receiver. The guy can play fullback, he can play tailback, he can play tight end, he can split into the slot and play receiver. The guy just has good route running. He's very athletic for his size. He has good hands. He finishes strong and he catches everything. I love Connor Hayward. Nice short touchdown. Uh, Pittsburgh was in the red zone tonight. Uh, Connor gets a nice three yard touchdown from um, Mitch Trubisky. So that was nice. Another positive I want to give to Calvin Austin, he only really had one reception today, uh, one he was overthrown on, and then he had one downfield, uh, did a little comeback route, caught a nice like 12-yard pass. So in addition to his nice uh, kick return, he had a nice catch as well today. Uh, Darnell Washington, uh, he only shows up on the stat sheet with one catch for six yards, a nice little short catch over the middle, but uh, drew two, two end zone pass interferences. That's what you want to see from a guy this big. You want to see that he can block, which we have seen, and you want to see him be a red zone target. And he was today. Uh, I think it was Trubisky. It might it might have been might have been uh, Mitch or Mason, but I think it was Trubisky. Threw two like one on one fade patterns to Washington, who drew two very obvious flags. Uh, he is he's going to be a weapon. This dude is big. He's got long arms. He's got a big frame. He's he's tall. He's wide. He's strong. He's a hard guy to watch. And for someone like that, again, his receiving is still coming along. His hands aren't super super short. He does drop stuff here and there. But as long as he can catch those short ones over the middle and as long as he can be a red zone target, you saw today what you want to see in the regular season. He drew two flags in the end zone, giving us more downs to score, which we did with Connor Hayward. So I give Washington a thumbs up here as well. Gunnar Olszewski was our wide receiving leader. He looked really good on the field today. You forget that Gunnar can do offensive stuff. You know, he's, he's mainly been a return guy for the past couple of years. Um, did get benched last year for us, um, dropping a couple of uh, punts or kicks. Uh, this year um, did get the um, couple couple returns in this game, but five catches, 41 yards. I like his route running. Uh, he's an undersized guy, but he's got some decent blocking ability for a small receiver. He can do some of the end around, the, the, the rushing stuff from the slot receiver spot, and then he can also run some routes. Um, there's going to be a log jam battle for the five and six receiver spots. Obviously, our big four are here. Uh, Robinson, Pickens, Johnson, and Austin are guaranteed. Those last two spots, you have Gunner, Olszewski, you have Miles Boykin, you have uh, Cody White, who had a couple nice targets tonight, uh, battling for that last spot. Those those three guys mainly. Um, but I think Gunner Olszewski, who can do returns, who can do the the, uh, the the rush plays that Canada likes, and he can receive, I think he's got a leg up. He's looked the best so far out of all the back-end receivers this preseason. Defensively, a lot of good stuff to speak of. Only one sack today, but it was a strip sack. Um, Nate uh, Nate Herbig, or Nick Herbig, I'm sorry, I got confused the two. Nick Herbig, 
He looks insane right now. He's having one of the best preseasons of any Steeler right now. Had two big sacks last week. This week he has a nice tackle for a loss on the running back. He came all the way across the field for a nice tackle for a loss on the running back. And then had a sack forced fumble combo off the edge. So, um, again, I, I, I want to pump the brakes on comparing him to T.J. Watt. Um, we got the Wisconsin connection. Obviously, Herbig has not played it down in the, in the regular season NFL yet, and T.J. Watt is the DPOY. So it's hard to compare a brand-new rookie to the best defensive player in the league. But, man, does Herbig look like Watt. It's the Wisconsin thing. It's the technique. Every time he comes in, he's got an extra burst. He gets around the guys. He has, he has the, the strife move. He has the, the run-around wide move. Herbig just looks so quick and so explosive out there. I love what I'm seeing from him. Again, two sacks last week, another one this week, another tackle for a loss in the run game. He's pursuing the plays well. He's finishing his tackles. I love what Herbig is doing. Uh, three interceptions tonight as well. Four turnovers total. Three picks, JPJ, Elijah Riley, and uh, Chandon Sullivan. JPJ's was just a nice... Um, uh, faded back, stayed on the edge, read the receiver, and caught the ball that was thrown right to him. Uh, made it, made a nice deceptive uh, play, floating back, made the pick. JPJ now has as many NFL picks as he had in, in all of college. Um, good to see that. It's his first game. He didn't play last week. This was his first NFL game ever, and he got a pick, which has been, been the biggest knock on him the entire time that he can't catch picks. So gets one in his very first game. Good to see him hand it to his dad. I love that. JPJ looks good out there today. He's playing very physical. Even the completions on him, he's playing very physical. Uh, Elijah Riley gets gets a nice back at the end zone tip drill play. Uh, Ball gets tipped up in the air, and uh, and, uh, Riley uh, catches in the back of the end zone and then smartly downs the ball. Elijah Riley has a good shot to make this team in the slot corner spot. I think he's been out playing a lot of other corners uh, all throughout camp. I like what he's doing. And then Chandon Sullivan gets a beautiful play where he uh, tips the, the, the ball gets thrown on some kind of slant. He tips the ball up in the air and then spins around and catches it himself. So he did his own tip drill. Really nice play there. Uh, smart instincts, good veteran, had a pretty good game. Uh, he obviously, I think, is one of the front runners in the slot for us as well. And we'll get to a few other guys. Uh, Tanner Muse played pretty well tonight. He got a fumble recovery on that strip sack. He was the one to recover the fumble. And he also had two tackles on defense and a couple on special teams. So uh, Tanner Mews being a special teams ace is really, really good there. Um, also made a few plays on defense. Uh, not the best cover guy. Did get beat, beat on one or two, um, but I think played pretty well in coverage overall today. I think he even uh, knocked one of the balls away in coverage. So I like what Mews did today. Again, the inside linebacker room is crowded. Um, we'll, we'll talk about a few more guys, like Mark Robinson, for example. Mark Robinson, again, he did get beat on one, one pass play. Still not the best cover guy, but he's hitting people. He looks fast. He's getting to the ball. He still doesn't always finish his tackles. He still gets out of position at times. He's, his form is not the best, but he's getting around the ball a lot, and he's hitting people when he gets around the ball. He had two big hits yesterday. Mark Robinson looks physical. Again, there's a lot of guys here. Cole Holcomb, who's still not covering the best, but he's playing well overall. Landon Roberts had a nice tackle yesterday. Um, uh, Quan Alexander, I think, is the best overall inside linebacker we have right now. And then you go to Tanner Muse, Nick Witkowski, who played last week pretty well till he got hurt. So it's going to be five guys looking for possibly four spots at the inside linebacker position. But I like the way the Robinson and Muse played yesterday. Isaiah Loudermilk made a few nice plays. Uh, I think he might have had the, the tip ball. There was, there was a ball tipped at the, at the line. I'm not sure if it was him or not. Loudermilk made a few tackles today. I like the way he's playing. He's fighting for a backup D-line position. I think he has earned it, in my opinion. Uh, a couple of minuses I wanted to talk about real quick. Again, Najee Harris just not having any burst or making any plays so far all the preseason. Didn't look great in camp compared to a few other guys. I think that Warren and McFarlane have stolen the show in camp, so Najee kind of got left behind in that regard. He's still the starter. He's still a, two, a, a two-time thousand-yard guy, but he gets a minus today. James Pierre gets a minus as well. Uh, he didn't play nearly as bad this week as he did last week, but he also played against the last team guys. He was pretty much a starter last week, playing very high up on the depth chart. This week he played at the very end of the game. Uh, so that tells you a lot about where he is. And with and with other guys like Sullivan and like Riley making plays this week uh, and just being consistently solid, I don't know that I really want him on this team. James Pierre, he is the most experienced uh, outside backup and he obviously can can play outside, whereas guys like Riley and Sullivan and even Trey Norwood, if he's healthy, I, don't, I haven't seen him play much. Um, those are kind of the slot slot guy slash safety kind of players. Um, whereas, you know, Pierre's a pure outside corner, but he's played the weakest of all of our corners so far this year. 
Uh, I didn't like his game tonight either. I mean, he had, he had a few tackles, didn't play as bad as last week, but still not good. Uh, Kendrick Green, um, uh, another guy who didn't play quite as bad this week. He was horrible last week, still wasn't good. W w was get getting bodied a few times. He led to the big play where um, I think it was Mason Rudolph got sacked for a big loss because Kendrick Green's guy bullied him back into the backfield. And then Green also, for the second time in two weeks, snapped the ball when the quarterback wasn't ready. Mason was looking off and Green snapped it. I think it was Green's fault, but I'm not entirely sure. Green snaps it back in the backfield, causes another 15-yard loss. So you know what? Kendrick Green's the worst person in a Steeler uniform. He's the worst player we have. We need to cut him. We need to cut him. He's bad. I'm sorry. Um, try him in fullback if you want, but he's bad. Uh, Kenny Robinson. I'm not as big on Kenny Robinson as you guys are. I know he got a lot of, of uh, camp hype, and he, he did start last week when the starters didn't play. But we obviously already have three guys in Fitzpatrick, KZ, and Neal that are going to be our three-man rotation that are going to all start and play a lot. And then, you know, you have guys like Killebrew, who's played good on special teams and has not given anything big up at safety. And then you have Trey Norwood, who goes back and forth between corner and safety. So I don't see Robinson making this team. And honestly, I don't think he's done really enough. He's around the ball, but he's usually getting beat on routes. And I don't see him making any, like, splash plays, personally. Um, and then we have special teams. Special team starters played well tonight. Uh, Boswell was two for two on field goals. Uh, Presley Harvin punted for the first time. He's been in, in the battle with Braden Mann for the punting spot. Um, the stat line's not going to sound super impressive because field position was on our side the entire game. Pittsburgh had the short field the entire game. Buffalo's average starting t starting uh, place was like the 14-yard line. Uh, Harvin, five punts for 191 yards. That is a 38.2 average, but all five punts were inside the 20. So yeah, the average is small, but he was punting from his 45 or 50-yard line the entire freaking night. So of course it's going to be a small average. He was punting on a short field the whole time. All five of his punts go inside the 20-yard uh, line. Again, they were getting the ball inside the 14 at the 10 a lot. He did, he did a very good job. Uh, I think Mann played decent last week, but I think Harvin locked up his starting spot this week. Played very well overall. So there you have it. The starters look amazing. The backups are hit or miss. But a lot of turnovers, a lot of good energy, a lot of scores, and a lot of positives today. For the Steelers, as they go 2-0 and and they go play, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it's a home or away game. I think it's away in Atlanta. But Pittsburgh's playing again in uh, f f four days at this point. So Thursday night against Atlanta. I'll bring you guys that review as soon as possible sorry for the one day delay go Steelers tell me in the comments below who you thought stole the show please talk about the game in the comments please like share and subscribe to this video and come back Thursday for more Steeler reviews I'll be doing a lot of positional recaps and things as well so stick tuned to the channel and I'll see you guys soon